Greetings, Detectives. Mrs. McKay here, and it's time for us to get started on learning target clue 9-3 out of case 9, which is called Crafty Constructions. And today's, is, today's lesson is, a little, is kind of a simple one, so hopefully we'll get through it quickly. It's all about translation. So we're going to start by filling in our learning target clue, which is I can translate. A line segment. and an angle on the coordinate plane. Okay, I can translate a line segment and an angle on the coordinate plane. Now let's go ahead and go over a few vocabulary words. We've got three big words that you need to know. The first one is transformation. Transformation is a general term that talks about the movement of all the points of a figure according to a common operation. Now, we're going to learn about some of these different operations. They're called translations, reflections, rotations. But basically what we're doing is we're doing the same thing to every point on that figure. All right? Now, a rigid motion transformation means that when we take a figure and we do something to it, and we make a new image, that the size and the shape of the figure stay the same. Sometimes in transformations there are things called non-rigid, non-rigid motion transformations, which means that the shape stays the same but the size changes. But we're mostly going to focus on rigid motion transformations where the size and the shape stay exactly the same. And then the third thing is translation which we've already done some translations in our previous cases working with uh, functions. So this is going to seem very simple to you. A translation is a type of rigid motion transformation that slides a figure. It slides it horizontally, it can slide it vertically, or it can slide it both, both directions, up or both, both ways, horizontally and vertically. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and get started by looking at these figures that I have in the middle of the paper. I have a line segment called PQ, I have a blue line segment called RS, and I have a red uh, angle called FUN. Okay, so I'm going to put a little thing here to show you that that's an angle. And I'm going to put endpoints on the ends of all of these because it's important to have our endpoints so that we know where things start and stop. And we're going to get started by filling in this chart. And this chart is going to tell us to do different things. And we're going to fill in the information of these different images that or figures that we're going to be doing a translation on. So let's start with PQ. And we're going to call PQ line segment PQ, notice how I put a little line segment over it. Line segment PQ is called our pre-image, and that just means it's our starting image, or it's our original image that we're going to start with, okay? And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to figure out what the coordinates of P and Q are. So go ahead and start with P, and tell me what the coordinates of P are. P, what are the coordinates of P? Well, it should be negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive 6. That would be the coordinate of point P. And go ahead and tell me what the coordinate of point Q is. Did you come up with negative 1, 6? Great. Okay. Now, there are different ways to show a translation, and I've shown you um, at least two different ways. So this way right here means that you're going to move your figure to the right. That's why the arrow is pointing to the right five units. So that means we're going to take every point on our line segment and move it five units. But the thing about a line segment is it's just a section of a line and we only need to know two points and then we can connect the two points, right? And the two points that we should know are the endpoints. So we're going to take P and we're going to move it five units to the right. So let's go one, two, three, four, five. 
let's see, one, two, three, four, five, yep. So we're going to take five, P, and we're going to move it to right here. Okay? And then we're going to take Q, and we're going to move it five units to the right. One, two, three, four, five. And then we can just connect our two points, and we've just translated PQ to a new image. And that image is called P prime, Q prime. Okay? So we're going to write it like this. P prime, Q prime. It has a little kind of apostrophe mark. With, so it's line segment P, P prime, Q prime. Okay? And why don't you go ahead and tell me what the new coordinates are of P prime and Q prime. Q, Q prime. Did you come up with 0, 6 and 5, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 6, there we go. So what's something that you notice about the coordinates? Do you see anything in common? Do you see anything different? Tell me what you notice. All right, let's go ahead and do line segment RS and go ahead and fill in the point values, the coordinates for R and S. All right, did you come up with 0, 2, and 6, 4? Now we're going to do a translation. So what's the translation? Well, this time my arrow says that I'm going to go down three units. So that means every point is going to move down three units. And But all I have to do is move the R and the S. So let's translate the R first down three units. So we're going to go, I also want to change my color. We'll try this one. One, two, three, and one, two, three, and then I can draw my line, and let's go ahead and write our new line segment is R prime S prime. Okay, now if I wanted to translate R, R prime S prime to a new location, like let's say I wanted to move it down even further, I wanted to move it to the left or move it to the right, then I would write it as R double prime with, with two little tick marks, okay? But right now we're just going to do these ones. So let's see, we had R prime, uh, S prime, it might help if I could write correctly. And that's a line segment. And what are our new, what are our new coordinates? R prime is what? So what did you notice on these? Notice that I have R prime is 0, negative 1, and S prime is 6, 1. So taking a look at your image from your pre-image, so your pre-image for R was 0, 2, and your image, your, your uh, translated image is 0, negative 1. What do you notice? Did the same thing happen for S prime, where it went from 6, 4 to 6, 1? Are you seeing a pattern? Are you noticing anything? When we moved, when we moved our points to the right horizontally, when we moved them horizontally, our y values stayed the same, and the only thing that changed were our x values of our coordinates, right? And that's because we just slid along that, along that value of y. But when we moved our images down, then our x values stayed the same, 
and our y values changed. Notice that when we move to the right, our, our x values increased by the number of units that we moved on our coordinates. And when we move, when we move down, our y values decreased, meaning we subtracted the units from the y value. Those are important things to know and pay attention to. Let's go ahead and do this angle now. The angle is just two line segments that need to be translated, isn't it? It's just two line segments that are put together. So we're going to go ahead and first of all say that this is angle FUN, so we write it like that with an angle sign in front of it. Actually, it's more like this. It's kind of straight. And let's go ahead and write the original coordinates for F, U, and N. So go ahead and do that. Okay. I hope you got the same things that I did, and if, if uh, you didn't, it's likely that I did it wrong, or maybe you did it. So let's both double check. So F is at 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yep, see, I made a mistake. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that should be 9. 9, negative 2. So I fixed that. And then U should be at 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, so 3, negative 4, and n should be at 9, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, negative 7, so that's a 9, negative 7. Now, let's take a look at this new way of writing a translation. Here's my translation. I don't, I not only want to move it horizontally, but I also want to move it vertically. So take a look what I've done, is I've written it in this coordinate notation. I'm saying that every x value is going to be negative 7, meaning I'm going to take the x and I'm going to move it 7 in the negative direction, and I'm going to take the point and move, make the y be plus 2. So I'm going to take every point, I'm going to start with f, I'm going to move it negative 7 and up 2, okay? So over 7 and up 2, or back 7 up 2. So let's start with my um, F. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2. So that becomes my F prime, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing for my U. I'm going to go... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up 2, and that becomes U prime. And then my N, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up 2, becomes N. And then I just connect my points. And you can see that I've now taken my image and I've translated it over and up over and up. Go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and write our new angle F prime U prime N prime and go ahead and give me the new coordinates. Now here's what I came up with for F prime it was 2 0 1 2 0 at U prime was negative 4 1 2 3 4 negative 2 and n prime was 2, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, oops, maybe that'd be an n prime. So there we go. Now, you could also, you didn't have to actually look at the graph and do this. You could just take your 9 and minus 7, you got 2, and your negative 2 and add 2, you get 0. So notice that the minus 7, the plus 2, if you just do that to your pre-image coordinates, you're going to get your um, new image. Okay, that's it for translations. There's a few don't forgets. The transformation happens to every point on the figure. And if you'll notice, the lengths of the images and pre-images remain the same. I'll see you in class.